Hello friends, my name is Heidi Sambel and welcome to my DIY channel. I'm so grateful you clicked on this video today and I hope that it will inspire you. In this video, I am sharing farmhouse spring Dollar Tree DIYs. Now I love Dollar Tree supplies because you can make them look so high end on a crafter's budget. All right, now let's get crafting. For this project, we're gonna be taking three of these crates and four of these tall glasses. Now, do you remember those tall candles? They have started selling the vases without the wax candles in them, which is so awesome. These are actually over in the floral section and over by the home stuff, like the home decor things. So it could also be by those candles that have the picture of the Savior on it. So go ahead and tape off your glass at halfway in the middle of it. And while those are outside drying, because I spray painted them white, we're gonna go ahead and take these three boxes and we're gonna glue them together. Once I've used some wood glue and some hot glue, because we wanna make sure we're using that wood glue in there too for that long-term hold, I went ahead and took some dark brown paint and I'm going to just brush that all over my box. This is going to give such a beautiful farmhouse French country look to it. Once that is all dry and as well as the glass jars, go ahead and take off that painter's tape, put in some foam. I glued everything down in there, even yes, the glass jars, because I'm not going to really put real water in this. I'm just going to always put faux flowers and I have cats in my house and I don't want them to knock these over. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just glue down in some boxwood and some Spanish moss. And then inside these glass jars, I can display some beautiful florals for whatever season and switch it out all year long. I found this darling wood house in the craft section at the Dollar Tree. I have some of this long garland greenery and then this gingham ribbon also from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to take off that twine ribbon at the top and then I'm going to take this garland and I'm going to twist it into a darling little wreath. It's really simple to do. You just twist a circle, tighten one in and then take the other existing long piece and I like to make sure that I wrap it twice because it makes the garland little wreath look a lot thicker so I'm just twisting all that into place adding some hot glue and then I'm going to put that on the front of the house this house could be decorated so many different ways for so many different holidays I just think it's so cute and I wanted to make sure I featured it here on my channel to go and find these houses pick them up and you can do so many neat things with them now I'm going to take some wire because I feel like this is, you know, a little bit higher quality than the twine and I'm going to just cut out a piece that's long enough to be able to loop around. I like to always twist my wire like this because it just looks really farmhouse and cute. I don't know. It's just kind of the way I always do it. Once that's nice and snug on there, I just think this is going to look so cute hung up on a wall somewhere. I'm going to add on a gingham bow. And then at this point, we could stop here or we can take it a little bit further like I like to do here with my crafts on my channel. I'm going to take one of these metal tag labelers and I'm going to just create two little dots where I know where to take my crocodile to punch out some holes. I love my crocodile tool. I talk about it a lot here on my channel. If you're new, I have had this tool forever. It used to be well, it still is. It's a scrapbook tool that you use to put on eyelets on scrapbook pages, but it goes through metal and cardboard and thick pieces of just pretty much anything. And it doesn't hurt your hand to use it. So I went ahead and punched out two holes and now I've got my Brad tray out, my little organizing kit that um, I use for scrapbooking. And I'm gonna pop out two brads that I think will look cute and work well with this metal tag sign. And I'm gonna just put those right through the holes and then fasten them into place by opening up the back side of them. And to make sure they don't come off or come loose, I'm gonna just add on some hot glue to glue those into place. And then at the front side, I'm gonna slip in a little piece of paper and I've decided to write the word home. But it could be so cute because you could put your address, 
You could put your family's name, whatever you'd like. For this project, we are gonna take this simple wooden framed box and we're gonna start by popping off the back of the twine, the sticker, all that good stuff on the back. And then we're going to take a dark brown and paint the frame and a little bit of the inside of this box. Don't forget the back as well because I love a good finished back on all my projects. Now we're gonna pick out some pattern paper. This part is the fun part because you get to pick the papers that you want. I measure the inside of my box with a clear ruler because it lets me be able to see the dimensions a little bit better with a clear ruler. And then I'm gonna just cut down my paper to size and glue that right inside the box. As I am putting the glue in, I'm trying to make sure I'm not leaving any of that stringy residue left behind from the hot glue because it does make it a little bit difficult later on trying to get out once you glue the paper in. And then I'm gonna just push that right down inside now I went over to my computer and printed out the word our nest using my word program on my computer. And then once I cut that down, I decided to come in with another pattern paper. I love mixing scrapbook pattern paper so much. I feel like it brings so much personality to such a simple project like a wooden framed box. Now I'm gonna layer those and glue those all together, cut them down to size, and then pop that right inside. Now we can stop there, and this is really cute and beautiful, but it, because it says the word nest, I thought it would be so adorable to bring in a tiny little bird's nest. Now we're gonna take some of this nautical rope. It has three twisted together on one rope strand. So I went ahead and just untwisted them so I only had one of those ropes. I tied a simple knot, and now I'm just gonna add some glue and start coiling around until I get to a size of a little bird's nest that I think would be cute for the corner of this frame. Once you've got it wrapped around enough, start to bring it towards the back side, wrap it around so it has a nice finished look. I feel like these are the moments where projects start to kind of look like a pinches fail if you're not careful with how the finishings are. So I'd like to bring it around the back, glue it into place. Then I added in some Spanish moss and now I'm gonna create some little tiny mini eggs with some air dry clay. These little eggs are going to really finish the look of this project. Once the eggs are dry, go ahead and take a paintbrush and just sprinkle on some of those little specks. And once they're dry, you can go ahead and glue your little egg into place. And I wanted to come in to give it that farmhouse look a little bit more. So I'm just dry brushing on some white paint and then to fill in that corner because I felt like it was still a little too not finished at the bottom of this project, I added in a little bit more of that Spanish moss. The Dollar Tree has tons of these right now, being that Valentine's Day is before spring, so you can find these for $1.25. I'm gonna take this sign though and I'm gonna turn it into something even cuter. We are going to first take that sign and we're gonna trace it onto some fabric. I always like to clean up the backsides of my projects because that's when it looks more store purchased versus it being that you made it from the Dollar Tree, if you know what I mean. So I'm just taking some of this really cute blue and white gingham fabric that I had on hand and I'm going to cover up that sign that's talking about Valentine's Day because this is for spring. So go ahead and glue that on all around the sides, clean it up, and if you have anything hanging over just come back in with your scissors and trim it up so it looks nice and polished. I always like to take the time to do these things because again they really make them look like they're store bought and not a DIY fail. <laughs> So now I'm going to just paint the back side of that sign since it was already raw and then I'm going to come in with my heat gun and dry it real quick. Once that's all nice and dry, now we can start working on some distressing, which is really simple. I always just like to use a very little amount of paint with dry brushing and then I just come in on the sides just to kind of make it look more farmhouse and spring. And now I'm going to take this white and orange gingham ribbon from the Dollar Tree. 
all of these supplies are from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to just do the first line. And you can see here I was trying to make sure I had my first line right. So make sure it's long enough and it's centered in the middle. And then you're going to pull it over and put a dot. Now you can see that I didn't go all the way across with a line of hot glue. We want it to feel kind of loopy and flowy. So you don't want to keep drawing lines of hot glue with it. I'm just going to simply put dots back and forth, back and forth. And as we're going down, you want to taper down the carrot ribbon so that it looks like a carrot. You don't want to keep it to be the same. If you feel more comfortable, you can even get a ruler and draw some pencil lines. If you don't want to freehand this and if you're a newer crafter, that's totally a good idea too. So you make sure you're staying on the line that you want to be following so it tapers down the way you want. Now with the magic of editing, I'm going to speed it up so you can see that as I'm going down, I'm tapering down the ribbon. And you want to stay close enough to each of those layers that you're putting so you don't see too much of the white behind at different angles. And that way you can see more of the orange. So just keep in mind, keep your layers close together. When you get to the bottom, snip off the extra, pull down that last little piece, and now we're going to work on the top of the carrot. This part is so fun because your carrot starts to come to life at this point. I'm going to use some of this grass from the Dollar Tree. I just popped off a couple of those little stems, and I'm cutting them down to size. Now this purple flower, I always have the hardest time working with it unless I'm making it into like a circle and a wreath, but it has the best greenery on it that looks like carrots. So if you see these long stemmed pink and purple, I think they're white too, at the Dollar Tree, grab them if you're working with carrots because it makes the greatest little foliage on top of the carrot. So go ahead and just glue about three of them on there. And then once you've got them all in place and you like how they look, it's nice and full, I'm going to come back in with some twine and just add a simple little bow. I feel like adding a bow always makes everything look so farmhouse, <laughs> just cute. I really love adding bows. I've never met a bow that I did not like, so I add bows to a lot of my stuff here. And if a bow's not your thing, you can skip that too. <laughs> now I'm going to add on some beads to be able to hang it up. And isn't this just the sweetest, easiest craft? I enjoyed making this so much. It took me probably about 15 minutes to make it, but it is just so fun and therapeutic to get my hands on these kind of projects. Friends, if you're new here, I would love it if you subscribe so you don't miss upcoming videos. And if you're new, returning, whichever, do give this video a thumbs up. I just had to try this hack and I wanted to know if it works on every cup. Now I found these whiskey cups at the Dollar Tree. I loved the size of them and I loved the thick glass at the bottom. I saw online that you could take white vinegar, pour it into a Pyrex dish and then let those soak. And those stickers are supposed to come off. But guess what? They do not come off on etched glass stickers. So if it's something that's like a vinyl sticker, they totally come off. But if it's etched glass, nope, it doesn't work. So I just want to let you know that is totally busted. All right, we're going to go to plan B for those whiskey glasses. But first, let's work on these bigger vases that you can get in the floral section. I'm going to wrap a thicker band and a thinner band around it, leaving the majority of this glass exposed. And if your lines are not lining up perfectly, remember you can use a craft knife and cut very thin straight lines and be able to clean that up. Now remember those whiskey glasses? I went ahead and wrapped some painter's tape as well around the base where that thicker, chunkier part of the cup was. And I spray painted inside of that glass so that you see the color all inside, all around the sides, but except for where the chunky glass is at the bottom. And it almost like illuminates that glass, which looks so cool, so pretty. Now I was envisioning this project for a wedding. I think these would be so beautiful on a table at a wedding and it's so cost friendly. If you are throwing any weddings that are coming up soon, grab some of these taller vases, two of them, and four of these whiskey cups and line them all up with some candles and florals and you've got yourself a high-end gorgeous centerpiece.
This DIY is super simple. You're gonna take one of these plastic Easter baskets and some carrots from the Dollar Tree. I'm also gonna be using some fabric in just a bit. You're gonna see that as well as some Dollar Tree rope. I took off the handle, measured about the height of the carrots from the bottom of the basket, and now with my scissors, I'm just going to cut off the extra that we don't need. Once you've got that all cut off, you're gonna take some burlap fabric and you're gonna just glue it onto the bottom of the basket, pulling it as tightly as you can, wrapping it all the way around. And you can see here that I put the handle back on. It has these little teeth on it that allow it to just pop right back onto the basket. Now we're gonna take those carrots and we're going to just wrap them all the way around the whole basket. My inspiration for this basket actually came from the Michaels store. They had this basket at their store and when I saw it, I knew right away I had to dupe this one. It was super expensive at their store and we're gonna make this so affordable using Dollar Tree carrots, their basket, and some rope. Once I had the carrots all the way around, I went ahead and took one of their nautical brown ropes. I untwisted it because there's three on each rope that are twisted together. And then I wrapped it around the handle, and then I took another one of the ropes from the Dollar Tree that's not untwisted, and I just coiled that all around on the inside, gluing it all together to make sure it had a nice finished look. Once everything was all coiled and pushed down inside, I used my scissors and cut off the extra that I didn't need and continued to coil it until it was all the way completely finished and you could no longer see the yellow basket. This was the easiest project and the results turned out so stinking cute. What do you all think? Leave a comment down below to let me know if you like it. I'm going to be taking this fall sign, but we're going to be using the back side as well as these bunnies. And we are going to start with taking our sign and tracing some fabric to size for the back side of our sign because we want to cover that up so it has a nice finished look. Once you've got it all nice and smoothed out and in place, I'm going to take some of my scrapbook paper that I have on hand. I love this floral print and this gingham blueprint together. I just feel like it screams spring. I love them so much. So I'm gonna add some adhesive to my sign and they don't have to be perfectly cut because we're going to do some distressing in just a minute. And you're gonna see I put some of the floral pattern on one side, on the other side, and then right in the center I'm bringing in that gingham. Now this is where the distressing is gonna come in. I love a roughed edge on my paper. So I'm going to just take my scissors and just keep rubbing back and forth. It's okay if it rips just a little bit. You don't want huge giant rips in it, but enough that it gives that distressed look. It kind of has a ruffled look to it when you get all the way around the four sides. And then I'm going to go ahead and add on some of this lace. And now we're going to move on to the bunnies. The bunnies always have these little holes in it when you buy these garland kits. So I like to just fill in those holes with some wood putty. I like to put my finger on the back side of the hole and then put in the putty so it doesn't keep squishing through. You'll notice that that can be kind of frustrating when you're trying to fill the hole. Once it's dry, go ahead and sand it down. Give your bunnies a couple coats of paint, depending on how white you want them to be, and then distress them. And at this point, once they're all dry, you can go ahead and start gluing them on. Now I'm gonna do five bunnies. The best way to center them is putting the bunny in the middle first and then keep working your way out to the sides. Now, it would not be complete without little bunny tails, so I added on some cotton balls and I also added on some twine bows every other bunny. Next, we're going to be making a little nest frame. I've got some of this dried grass, a frame that I had on hand from a thrift store a while back, some of these Easter eggs, and some rope. 
start by taking the frame and painting it white or whatever color you want, but I like white, <laughs> so I'm gonna paint it white. And now I'm gonna take some scrapbook paper that has music notes on it and glue that down onto the frame. Now at this point, we are gonna take some of the rope and we're gonna start coiling it around in a circle to create a nest. Keep those nice and tight as you possibly can. Here's another nest I made around Christmas time where I did the exact same method but just added some grass at the top. Once you've coiled it around and around and around, decide how big you want the nest to be and then cut off the end and add in some of this dry grass. Once you've got your dry grass in the center, it's ready to add in a little baby egg. But first what we're gonna do to get rid of some of that glitter, cause I don't really like the look of the glitter on there. It's not as cute, desirable as I'm going for. So I'm gonna take the egg and I'm gonna roll it in a robin's egg blue color and I'm just going to make sure it's got a nice coat on it. Now Robin's eggs have little speckles of black paint on it, so once your blue is dry, this is one of my favorite techniques for getting texture on objects, the little speckles of paint. Take a toothbrush, flick the paint onto it, and you've got it all speckled on. Now you're going to take your frame, sand it up a little bit, pop in that backing, pop in that Robin's blue egg, and you've got a beautiful spring decor piece. This adorable project has tulips that I picked up from Amazon, a foam square piece, and then a bucket from the Dollar Tree. Start by adding hot glue and a little bit of E6000 to the bottom of your square foam piece and pop that right inside your bucket. Now I'm gonna use a plier to push in some holes because these tulips have wires in them, but they have this realistic green casing around it that doesn't let them go into the foam as easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow those holes to help me get them in there nice and easy, and then I'm going to just glue them into place. Cut your tulips at all different heights and continue to fill them in until you have a beautiful full bucket of tulips. Once they are all in place, take some of the Spanish dried moss and pop that in around the bottom of the flowers in the bucket. For this project, we're gonna use one of these frames, four of these, also frames. It's kind of like a clipboard, but I wanna to get to the initial shape, which is this cathedral window. We're gonna go ahead and cut all that apart and pop off with a pair of pliers. If you pull it away from it, it comes off real easy. And then the clip on the front. And then also, I forgot to mention, we're gonna be using some of these tumbling blocks and that's just gonna help strengthen everything on the inside. So go ahead and use a little screwdriver, take off that clip on the front. I always keep my hardware from these kinds of things because sometimes you can use them for other projects. So I just stick them in a Ziploc bag and then I just keep them in a drawer. Now I'm just gonna measure out a piece of this wood contact paper and I'm gonna put that on here, but you're gonna see I'm gonna actually take that off. I feel like this project, it's kind of funny. You're seeing me in the process of how I think when I'm crafting and I'm trying something new. I am gluing on these little window frames and I'm coming around all four sides and they fit perfectly on this little wooden frame square box that I had from earlier. Now you're gonna see me add in those tumbling blocks to support the sides of my little window frames. We don't want those to get weak. So I'm adding in those wood blocks to strengthen it. They also fit in there nice and perfect. Now at this point you can see that I decided to take back off that contact paper and I'm still gonna use it, but it's because I decided instead of painting with a brush, I was gonna speed up the process. <laughs> so I'm gonna add some painter tape to the black border of that wood box and I'm going to take it outside and spray paint the windows white. I also decided to spray paint the bottom inside of that box black. Once I had everything spray painted, <laughs> now I'm coming back in with that contact paper and I'm smoothing it out. And you can see I did cut a little bit of a square corner in each one so that it fits in there nicely. 
Then last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this greenery that has wire in it and I'm going to twist it into a wreath, add it to the bottom and you've got the most beautiful farmhouse candle holder. I hope you felt inspired by these projects. I love spring and I love coming up with fun ideas using Dollar Tree supplies. And please remember to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help out my channel. And share it on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, wherever you feel inspired to share. Thanks so much for stopping by and until the next episode, bye friends.